All right, what's up, Tim Sykes? I hope you're having a good weekend. We got some good football games on, but I want you to be prepared with these seven stocks to watch. So get ready to be prepared ahead of time. That is the key to success. Not waking up right at the market open or five minutes before the market open and being unprepared. Um, so I'm going to go over all the top stocks that I'm watching. First, I have to tell you, uh, you know, stocks to trade. I know a lot of you guys love it. The paper trading, the Oracle feature, the Twitter integration. I'll have more video lessons on how to use it, but I have to tell you on February 1st, we are increasing the price because frankly, the data industry is very regulated and we've been losing six figures on stocks to trade, just making it great for you guys. Um, I don't need to make money on it, but you know, I'd rather not lose six figures. So the price is going up on February 1st. Uh, so you have a few days to save $400 and be grandfathered in um, at your price locked in forever no matter how many times we raise the prices eventually because there are so many more features coming and I'll get into that. But if you go to stockstotrade.com slash annual dash special, you can see that. Um, I'll have a link under this video too. Also, I just wrote a blog post here on timothysykes.com um, and it's my take on politics, power, protests, and profit opportunities. And it is a must read, especially with all these protests and our new president going on. And you can see my take on it. Very touchy subject, um, but I had to write it because I think that there's opportunity there for you. So let's talk about some stocks right now. Uh, GLBS is, you know, by far the, the biggest winner lately. You can see it's been following a nice uh, bouncy pattern the past few days. Actually, my challenge student, Ducks, uh, D-U-X is his username on Profitly. He just passed 750000 in profits, and he actually just posted a good video lesson uh, today on this. Um, I guess I'll link that underneath too. So thank you, Ducks, for, for sharing your stuff. Um, GLBS looks like it's going to spike again, you know, and, and shorts are just in a world of pain. And they're saying, but the fundamentals, the fundamentals are so bad. Hey, guys, snap out of it. It's not the fundamentals that are driving this stock price up. It's you idiot short sellers who are squeezing each other. This is what's so funny. Short sellers whine and they say, oh, it must be manipulation. It must be a pump and dump. That's why it's going up. And they take these gigantic short positions, and when it goes up and they have to cut losses, guess what? They're trampling each other to get out. And when a short seller tramples each other, they have to buy, and that forces the stocks to go up. So it's not pumping. It's not manipulation. It's you. You're the problem. You're the cause of this. And the short sellers don't realize it. They think there's some conspiracy theory you know, oh, the whole world is against me. It's you. Stop shorting up trending stocks. Or if you do short them, take your profits when they come down. God, there's so many wannabe short sellers these days because, you know, if you look at these fundamentally, they're all terrible companies. Every single penny stock is a terrible, terrible fundamental company. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go to zero. And in this market, a lot of these fundamentally broken companies have been surging. And so it's been a very rough ride the past few months for short sellers. Their drug use and their alcohol intake has gone way up. And they're just so stressful. I'm sure their blood pressure is way up. Why? You know, like just get with the times, adapt. And I'm not saying that I'm necessarily the best at adapting. I prefer shorting rather than going long. But at least I'm not opening myself up to disaster like every single day like some of these short sellers are. And you longs, congratulations. You know, morning spike. Morning spike, morning spike, morning spike, morning spike. What's next? I don't know, but after hours, it's already going up quite nicely, and I'm proud of you guys who were long. Also, don't just overstay your welcome. Just because some shorts have been squeezed early on, that doesn't mean they're going to continue to get squeezed. So be very careful with that. Um, TBIO is my weekend play. I think this one can bounce. Um, you know, it's down off the $1.50, $1.60 highs, uh, and I put in a nice bottom on Friday, just the first green day. If you look at ETRM, very similar, had its first green day on Thursday, and then Friday morning it popped. Um, it didn't finish at necessarily its highs, but I'm not going for you know TBIO to go all the way to the highs. I just think that it can do an ETRM-like spike uh, in the morning on day two. You know, First of all, it has to break this 88, 90, 92 level, and then if it does, you know, I would love to see, uh, you know, one, and there should be some resistance at 110. That's about it. I'm not saying this is going to go back to 150 or 160, but I respect the first green day uh, on these kinds of supernovas. This is a classic number five pattern 
for those of you who watch my Penny Stocking Framework DVD. Congrats to those of you who were long ETRM uh, Friday morning. I know a few of you caught that ride. I mean, that was a quick ride from the sixes all the way to, to 10 in the first like 20 minutes. Um, I missed it. You know, I'm missing plays left and right. There's frankly too many. It's like fire at will right now. But I am up. Uh, I've locked in roughly $40,000 in profits in the first three weeks. I'm still getting used to trading with a bigger size account. Um, I'm posting more live trades. I hope you guys like that live trade that I posted on Friday. I'm going to post more of them where there's no alerts. No one even knows I'm in the trade. And you can just see my thought process from, you know, entering the trade, staying in, increasing or decreasing my position, and then eventually exiting. You see my entire trade from start to finish. Um, so I think that's going to be useful. But TBIO, you know, I'm in at, what about I, I bought in at around 80 cents, and then I added some at like 83. Um, so I'm up a few cents a share, you know, and I could be wrong on any of them. It wouldn't surprise me if this wall of sellers held at 88. But I want you guys watching because if this does break the afternoon resistance of 88, you know, this could go to a dollar, a dollar ten, and you know, it's proven that it can run up. So I, I would say I wouldn't estimate that it would go further than a dollar ten. But on these morning spikes, I mean, it could go to a dollar twenty, and that wouldn't surprise me. So if I'm wrong, I'll cut losses quickly. If I'm right, I'll take profits. But this is a damn good pattern. First green day overnight hold. Uh, no different than ETRM. Also, APRI is another one that had its first green day off a multi-day drop. Um, and this one, you know, is roughly 50% off its highs. It's not a coincidence, guys, okay? When these things drop 40%, 50% off their highs, they are dip buys. I don't care how much you hate the company. Uh, on Friday, I was dip buying uh, PNAT, which is a blatant pump. And I was buying it in here in the low twos, mid twos. I was a little too early with my buy at 250. Uh, the, the low turned out to be 225, but it bounced from 225 to 325. And it was kind of funny getting some of the hate. People are like, how could you buy this pump? This is terrible. And I'm like, this is a number five pattern, you know, from my penny stocking framework DVD, which was made several years ago. I have several examples like CNAB, uh, CATQ, HADV, CGRW, the exact same pattern. Oh, AXIM. Also, all of those stocks bounced 30, 40, 50, 60 percent in one to two hours. And this turned out to be uh, a nice little 40 percent bouncer uh, from the bottom to the top. I mistimed it a little bit, but you know, it's not a bad trade where I lost, I ended up losing like four cents a share. I was buying, you know, roughly 20 cents a share too early. Um, but even from my entry, there was 75 cents of upside, and from the bottom, there was a dollar of upside. So if you lose four cents a share and there's, you know, on the right path, kind of a dollar a share of upside, that's a good setup. The reason why I'm bringing that up now is because, yes, I've already lost on this stock. Boo-hoo. I lost a little over $100. I'm crying uh, just like these, you know, short sellers who lose $100,000. I'm just kidding. I'm not crying like them. I can afford to lose $100. I don't risk death. I don't risk high blood pressure. I don't risk disaster. I trade safe like a coward, and I'm proud of it, as you can hear in my voice. But the reason why I bring up PNAT is because if it does another big drop like this, it'll be another good dip buy, okay? I'm not saying invest in this company for the long term. It's a blatant pump and dump. If you found shares to short, fantastic. It was also a first red day, which is a number four pattern from my Penny Stocking Framework DVD. So you can go long, you can go short, but you should be looking to react to how the stocks react and no different than AXIM, you know, where this was a great dip buy right here. I got a dip buy. There was another dip buy. And then I actually missed this, this first green day. And here's another example. If you want to see what a first green day looks like, this was a first green day. It finished near its highs. And even though it finished down here, look at this morning spike. Okay. Let me turn these uh, little technical alerts off and you can see here it spiked from 1350 to 1550. This was a two dollar a share morning bounce after the first green day on AXIM. So that's what I love seeing. You know, on ETRM, this was a nice four dollar a share bounce. Uh, APRI, this is just the first green day, so we'll see what it can do. But APRI and TBIO are on the first green day, so we'll see how much they can bounce. But if AXIM and ETRM are any sign, they can bounce some more. 
GLBS, where's the top? I don't know. I don't care. Okay. All I want you to do is respect this price action and don't risk disaster, longs or shorts. If it's going up and you're long, that's fantastic. Look to make 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar a share, lock it in. Maybe $2 a share if you're really aggressive. Um, but I wouldn't say this is going to go to 20 uh, or 50. Like some people are saying, oh, this is the next DRYS. Maybe it is, but the odds of that happening, very, very slim. Okay? That's like the Cleveland Browns winning the Super Bowl next year. It's possible, but it's very, very slim. Um, you want to focus on what is a, a high odds type pattern. And buying for morning spikes, that's been working. Um, so you, you buy in the afternoon and you hold overnight, or you buy right at the open and you look to take a quick spike, or more like Tim Grittani who likes to short morning spikes. Although I would warn against that, as I'm warning all short sellers right now, because shorting morning spikes, you know, it's worked, but it's, it's scary, okay? When these stocks, I mean, this thing the other day went from five to 10, all in the first hour of the trading day. And then, yeah, it came down, you know, uh, like $1.50. And then it put up a fight all day. So which would you rather do? Would you rather try to make $5 a share? Where it's, I mean, this is, this is intense. And I'm not saying try to be there for all $5 a share. But again, when you have $5 a share of upside and like $1.75 of downside, which side do you want to be on? Again, most traders don't really want to risk too much. And that's how it should be. Some of you guys, though, I see are gunslingers, especially short sellers lately because they've had success over the past few years. And now they're kind of quiet. Some of them are, you know, wondering, wait a minute, is my strategy right? Am I off a little bit? If you risk disaster nearly every single day, your strategy is not right. Longs and shorts alike, okay? If I'm dip buying AXIM, and I'm just aiming for the little bounce, that's a good strategy. It worked for me a few times. But if I'm dip buying AXIM and thinking that it's going to bounce necessarily from 10 back to 20, that's a long shot, okay? So you really have to determine, is the trade that you're in a long shot or is it going to be a high odds pattern? And you can try both and you can learn. This is part of the reason why Stocks of Trade, I'm so proud of the new paper trading, where you can practice and you can test every single day. Part of what's so difficult for me creating millionaires from scratch is it takes a while. You need a lot of supernovas. You need a lot of examples. You need a lot of experience. But now with practice trading and paper trading, you don't have to risk your hard-earned money while you learn and you adapt and you see what a high odds pattern is. So I could be wrong on TBIO. I'm perfectly willing to admit that. But this is a high odds pattern that it's going to at least morning spike tomorrow, especially based on how ETRM did on day two. There's a high odds pattern that APRI is going to spike on day two. I probably should be long both of them. Um, DELT is not a high odds pattern, okay? Because this one is coming down. So some people will say, oh, let me just dip by it. It finished red on the day, negative 9%. URRE, I was also trying to dip by this. It finished down 12%. When a stock finishes red on the day, 9 or 12%, and it does not morning spike, and it fails to go green, that is not a good dip buy to hold overnight. Because most likely, URRE and DELT are going to face some more downside tomorrow. How do I know that? I don't know for sure, but I have learned to respect first green days versus first red days. First red days are potential shorting opportunities, especially on pump and dumps. First green days are potential long opportunities. These are the rules that I've learned in nearly 20 years of trading, okay? So you can ignore my rules. You can think I'm full of BS. I don't care. I've refined this strategy over time. So if you want a very simple analysis, DELT and URRE probably will not bounce tomorrow. They probably will face some more downside. And TBIO and APRI probably will have morning spikes. I don't know if they finish the day green, but I'm not interested in how they finish. I'm interested in what they do near the market open. And this has been proven as based on ETRM and AXIM on their first green days. Both of them led to morning spikes. This one was $2 a share. ETRM was the big $4 a share. So they're a little higher price, but you can begin to tell the difference between a first green day 
in a first red day. If you understand what I'm saying, type in odds, O-D-D-S, in the comments section. I want you taking high odds patterns, okay? Trading is tough. Remember that 90% of traders lose money. So if you want to try to increase your odds of success, you take high odds patterns. And that's what I try and teach. That's what I try and do. I could be wrong on any stock. I admit that. Uh, I was wrong on Friday, you know, dip buying uh, PNAT a little too early. Uh, I was wrong dip buying URRE. Um, just totally wrong on that one. But I recognized my mistakes, and they were small gains and small losses on both of them, basically a scratch, and that's okay. Now I'm in a better position where I think that I'm in a good play overnight on TBIO, um, and we'll see if it can spike some more. If not, I'll take a small loss. It won't be the end of the world. A lot of you guys are scared to trade because you're scared of big losses. What you don't understand is that if the stock starts going against you, especially when you hold overnight and you're not you know, using a day trade for some of you guys under the PDT rule, small losses are fine. Some people try and shame me like, oh, you lost on PNAT. You thought it would bounce and you lost. FYI, I lose money on every single trade on my small E-Trade account. Whether I make or lose $100 or $200, it costs me more to send out the fucking alert to you guys in email and text message in all the various ways. I'm not in trading to necessarily make money. I'm in this to teach you. So if I can teach you good odds and I can teach you how to cut losses quickly, that's a good trade. I'll lose $100 every single time. And the better news is that $100 doesn't really matter to me, okay? I'm still green on the day. I'm still green on the month, on the week. I'm up $40,000 in freaking three weeks. And my small E-Trade account, which I started with just $5,000 to begin 2017, is up to roughly $7,000. So even with my small losses sometimes, my accounts grow steadily. That's the key to success. So many of you guys are so scared to have a loss and to make a mistake. Be scared of a big loss, okay? Be scared of a big potential mistake. But if you're willing to cut losses quickly and you trade like a sniper and you aim small and you miss small and you cut those losses, no small loss can turn into a big disaster. Sometimes I cut my losses and I shouldn't have and it would be a bigger game, you know? That's what some people say. Sorry, I get some, some crashes on uh, Stocks to Trade with this filming software. We're working on it. But you do not have to be afraid of small losses. They are okay, and they're actually good. My small loss on PNAT, I'm not embarrassed about it. I was on the right track. I got to show the exact pattern that I've showed now in a dozen videos in the past few weeks. I mistimed my trade, but it's not the end of the world. I'm already on to the next trade. And more importantly, my account did not risk a big disaster. 90% of traders lose. And I guarantee you that the vast majority of them who lose, it's due to risking a big disaster because they haven't learned to cut losses quickly. Because the way that I teach is cowardly. And a lot of traders will tell you, oh, Tim, he's, he exits so quickly. He's, he's such a coward. And they say it like it's a bad thing. And part of the reason why I'm not so popular in the trading world is because there's this whole fucked up, flawed mentality that you have to be this gunslinger. And that, you know, if you get in of a trade and out of a trade, like within a few minutes, it's like, oh God, you're, you're such a flip flopper. Like I'm a politician voting for a crime bill. Traders are not politicians and we're not voting on any bills, okay? Traders trade in and out. And the best traders, as I mentioned earlier, can go long a stock. And guess what? If the stock is failing to go green on the day, traders don't just, the best traders don't just sell their longs. They actually go from long, let's say 10,000 shares to short 10,000 shares. It's not a bad thing to flip flop, okay? It's not embarrassing. That's what we do. We're professional flip floppers. That's what trading is all about. When the price changes, when the patterns change, when the situation changes, you have to change. And too many people simply hold and hope. Like, oh, I didn't cut my losses this time. Maybe it'll just come back. And so you hold. 
And then guess what? Sometimes it does come back and you're like, ha, Sykes, I told you I shouldn't have cut losses quickly. Your rules suck. And you learn the wrong lessons and then you have too much patience and you hold and hope again and again and again. And trust me, over time, you will lose more than you win versus me where I might look like a fool for getting in and out so quickly like I did on PNAT, but I was on the right track. I took my small losses. I didn't risk disaster and I lived to fight another day. And by the end of the day, I was already green on the day thanks to my other trades. I cut my loss. I was out of PNAT. I know a lot of students who timed it better than me and they made money and that's awesome. So you choose good trades, trades with high odds of success, not long shots. And you practice good trading habits, which is cutting losses quickly and frankly, you know, focusing on the meat of the move, not trying to find the exact bottom or the top. You will do well. Okay. That is what Stephen Ducks has done. Let me just show you. Let me just close strongly. One sec. Let me find this chart. This is Stephen Ducks, and he's not winning 100% of the time. He's winning roughly 74% of the time, which is so creepy because that's pretty much my exact winning percentage. He's taking different trades than I am. He didn't really get it in the beginning. He's been a challenge student for nearly a year, but now he's up to $759,000 in profits. And you can see his trades. And guess what? He was long a little bit on DELT. And look at his losses, okay? He lost roughly 300 bucks. But he was also shorting APRI. And look at what he was making there. He was making $30,000. So you can be wrong on a stock like DELT, which is fine. I'm guessing he thought that it would go, you know, red to green like a lot of other people did. It didn't go red to green. He was wrong. He lost $300. He was dead on right about shorting APRI. And that is fantastic. Okay? And that's what you have to learn to do. Your gains, while not necessarily going to be 33000 like ducks, you know, he's betting a little bigger, are bigger than your losses. So don't be afraid of losses. And I'm so sick to death of people who try and shame others for their losses. Because a loss can be a good thing. Yesterday's video, I highlighted two of my recent losses. I didn't shy away from them. I wasn't embarrassed by them. I learned from them. Because my two losses, which were losing $100 roughly on PNAT and then losing roughly $1,000 on APRI, I was a little too early on both of them. I was actually shorting APRI around 375. The top turned out to be, you know, four ish. I was 25 cents a share off before it crashed $2 a share. So again, very similar to PNAT. You know, PNAT, I was off by roughly 25 cents with my buy and there was a dollar a share of upside. So I was a little off, but I was on the right track. APRI, when I was shorting it at 375, it got up to like 4, 405. So I was like off the bottom of like 30 cents a share. And I didn't take a loss of 30 cents a share. You know, remember that. PNAT, I only lost 4 cents a share. APRI, I think I cut my losses for like 10 cents a share. So I was off on my timing, but I didn't take the full loss because I've learned to cut losses quickly. And I was dead on right with my, you know, path with my trade. I was on the right track. APRI tanked nearly 50% over the next day or so. I was a bit too early. PNAT jumped 40% over the next few hours. I was a little too early. That is trading. And it's kind of cool when, you know, even with my losses, I'm on the right track and you can see that I'm on the right track. And some people will say, oh, Tim, you shouldn't care about what a stock does after you're out. Oh, really? Why not? Am I anti-education? Am I anti-progress? How do you not care about what a stock does after you get out? That's how you learn. Should I have held longer? Should I have you know, worked on my timing a little bit? Trading is not an exact science. So if you lose and you cut your losses quickly, if you're disciplined like me, and you're on the right track, that's a good trade. The value of a trade is not based on your own personal profit or loss. It's how right you were with your thesis. And then you try and adapt and do better in the future. But I was right with my thesis to short APRI near four. I was a little too early. I broke my rules. I got a little too excited. PNAT, I was right in my thesis to dip by the morning panic. I got a little too excited. I bought a little too early. That's trading. And I'm going to adapt. 
So I love learning from my losses. I love learning from my profits. I love learning from my students' profits and losses. And by the way, you know, this was Ducks when he was shorting APRI. You know, he nailed it. He was short pretty much at the, the exact same time as me or the exact same price, but his timing was a little better. He shorted in the afternoon. I shorted midday. I entered too early. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I was on the right track. Ducks just executed it better than me. And I love seeing students execute trades better than me. Nothing gives me more pleasure. So that's why I'm a teacher, not a hedge fund manager, not a prop trader. I am a better teacher than I am trader. And yet I've still made millions of dollars trading. And now I make millions of dollars teaching. If you can be real in this industry full of scams, you will have success. So props to Ducks, props to everybody who takes good trades. Shame, shame, shame on those of you who try to rip on other traders and tear people down when they have a loss. If you cut your losses quickly, they are good experiences and you can grow from them. Just don't ignore your losses. You know, don't say, oh, I had a loss. Let me just forget about it and never think about it. Look at your losses. See what you did wrong, okay? Ducks lost less than a penny on DELT. And I can guarantee you, I know what he was doing. He was going for the green to red bounce, okay? Or the, the red to green bounce, my bad. I know some of you guys are colorblind and it was confusing for you. <laughs> and it's confusing for me because I'm talking fast and I'm trying to get this video done. But DELT looked like it might be able to bounce on Friday and it just couldn't go green. Ducks tried to buy it and when he saw it wasn't going green, he cut losses quickly. He lost less than 1% on his money. So for somebody up $750,000, you think he gives a shit about losing $200. Or on this trade, he lost $64. You know, I don't think he really cares. And this was, I think, in the afternoon, he was in the, the challenge chat room saying, you know, once it broke two, it could really squeeze. And I actually traded this one better than he did. I was in at roughly the same price and I sold near the top around 223, 224. That was my live trade that I posted for subscribers only on, I posted the video on Friday, but it was a Thursday trade and this was his trade. So Ducks did better than me on, uh, you know, APRI shorting and I did better than him on DELT. So we go back and forth and I'm trading with a smaller account and it's not about, you know, money or, or, or even competition. You shouldn't try and be like, oh, I have to beat this trader. I'm just showing you examples. And it's kind of cool that, you know, my top students and I trade in similar ways and we have similar success. And that frankly is something that a lot of my critics can't stand. They're like, but, but how, how did they do that? How did they know? On Friday, actually, Mark Crook, my student who's up about 600, wait, hold on, let me pull up his chart. 661,000, uh, Mark Crook is up. And on Friday, he was actually buying um, TBIO at the exact same time that I was. And it was kind of crazy because he messaged me. And, you know, we don't, we don't talk when we're doing trades. But sometimes, you know, he sees my alert and it takes me like 30 seconds to write out an alert. And literally, you can look at this in the challenge chat room archives. Like within 10 or 15 seconds of when I posted my trade, he posted his trade on TBIO. We had bought at the exact time same minute and we weren't talking to each other we had no idea but he has watched all of my video lessons three times and he is responsible for basically tagging all the video lessons into categories so he knows my strategy to a t and ducks trades i bring up the famous example that you know now he's embarrassed to admit but he studies on the toilet okay so if you study these videos enough and you start learning the patterns the ins and the outs you can trade like my top students and I, okay? We're not copying each other. We're not talking to each other. We're not trading in groups like some, you know, really screwed up traders do. We specifically know the patterns and we know where there are good odds and bad odds. And we try and take good odds positions long and short. And I don't know if Mark Crook or Ducks Trades is gonna be my next millionaire student, but you can see from their profit charts that they are both on the right track and it adds up very nicely. And Tim Gratani, my top student, is now up $180,000 in 2017 in three weeks. So <laughs> if you just want an idea of what 
this pattern and these strategies are capable of, look no further than my top students and I. And I'm very proud of each of them. So anyways, those are the stocks that I'm watching for this week. Please focus on taking good patterns, good odds trades. If you don't know the patterns, watch my damn DVDs. I know that you don't want to watch. I know you don't want to study, but that's where I explain these patterns and the video lessons. But start with my How to Make Millions guide. You go to howtomakemillions.com. It's now raised $2 million for charity. I don't get a dime from it. I don't want a dime from it. I want you to learn these patterns, and I'm very proud of my charity. I actually have a big seven-figure charity donation to announce very shortly. It's going to be very cool. So anyways, leave a comment with the word odds, O-D-D-S, if you understand what I'm talking about here. I know I'm talking fast, so feel free to watch this video lesson a few times. The more you study, the better prepared you are. The more success you'll have, the better the odds you'll have. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the chat room tomorrow.